So if you were to ask me, what are you all about, Kevin? What are you all about, Dr. Foster? Why are you a scholar? I would give you this personal vision. And I would say, I want to be a part of an academy that is defined by and that is supportive of the seamless integration of teaching. And then I'd say, wait a minute. Nobody's going to understand that. And so I would then start to break out the key words and say, what is it that I'm really saying? And I would talk about the seamless integration of teaching, research, and scholarship. Should be service. In order to, and I'd say, well, that's too much. You know what? I became a professor to teach, to discover, to learn, and to make a difference. And I kind of want to not lose my mind or my soul in the process. <laughs> and the problem that initially and immediately arrives for those of us who want to be what we'd call community engaged scholars, we want to do it all. We want to be great classroom teachers. We want to do earth shattering, transformative research. And we want to do research that specifically, when we use that word transformative, has an impact on society. And it's difficult to do it all when we are trained. You come to university as a newly minted PhD, and they hire you, and they say, congratulations. Here's your teaching assignment. Here is your research. Well, do whatever you want. We hired you for this. So do some good research. Publish some articles. And service, yeah, don't do so much of that. And it's kind of like the dirty little secret of academia that what we believe or what we say is it's about teaching, research, and service. But what we say to one another and what we say to junior faculty is that actually these realms operate independently and we want to train you to do each one well. And that service thing, well, you can do that once you're tenured. Well, what if? Instead of thinking of these individually, we began to think in terms of, like, if you remember the Venn diagram and the spot of overlap, if we began to bring teaching, research, and service towards one another, and we began to think of ways to teach our students in ways that serve community. If we began to say, well, when I work with my students, maybe we'll do an action research project. Or maybe we'll formulate some research questions and go out into community and do some research. So we brought some teaching together. We brought some research together. Well, what if our research actually has on the ground impact? Well, now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting to the possibility of teaching, research, and service coming into harmony. One of the realities is that many folks who come to the academy as first generation scholars, the first in their family to go to college, to get a master's, to get a PhD, the first to become professors. Many who come uh, from the angle of uh, being African Americans, many who come from a range of marginalized populations and mar marginalized circumstances, when they enter the academy, they enter with a commitment. They enter with a commitment to the communities from which they came. And this becomes a bit of a setup. If you are dedicated to service and the academy, once you get in the door, says, oh, well, that service is not really what we're about. And you feel like someone did a little bait and switch on you. In a 21st century academy, in a place like the United States that is complex, that is richly diverse, in a plural nation, a professoriate, an academy, that represents the nation and the nation's people and the world and the world's people is going to have to be one where we get away from teaching, research, and service as independent and towards an imagining of the academy where our faculty members not only can do it all, but are truly expected to do it all. I'm going to provide at least an example with some subparts here of how uh, I and my graduate students, how we try to teach, research, and serve. In 2006, I started the Institute for Community, University, and School Partnerships, ICUSP. ICUSP started with a signature program called COBRA. COBRA, we love acronyms, so it was a Community of Brothers and Revolutionary Alliance. And it was a group of high school students. It was 12 African American boys. This group, COBRA, was started because a local principal said, I have a problem. I have too many kids in ISS. Somebody shout out what ISS is. Oh, Lord have mercy. The fact that so many 
could shout that out so quickly is it well we will talk about that later so ISS stands for in school suspension and if you go to a local high school and you go into that room where they have the in school suspension chances are you're gonna see a whole lot of black males and then you might see a couple of Latino boys and then you might see a couple of females of various races but overwhelmingly in many ISS's it's African-American males and then we look at the test results and we look at the who's in the AP courses and we look at basically the academic trajectories and we see black boys underperforming and one principal said you know Dr. Foster uh, you know we've been talking for a while and you seem like a cool guy would you be willing to come out I said yeah and so I came out and we started doing this work and COBRA kind of came into being within a year COBRA became uh, it grew. And we began to attach research questions to COBRA, trying to get to the hows and whys of COBRA, how it worked, what was working, what wasn't working. And as COBRA grew, and as school districts began to fund COBRA, all of a sudden I had to hire graduate students to become project directors and undergraduate students to become facilitators. And now we've got this robust intergenerational network of undergraduate students, graduate students, some faculty members, lots of community members, all supporting COBRA. COBRA became a site for teaching, for teaching undergrads how to be engaged academic intellectuals and citizens. It became a space for graduate students to develop their school skills as community engaged scholars, it's a research site, and on we go. Voices starts. Voices, if you like COBRA, voices is even better. Voices is verbally outspoken individuals creating empowered sisters. <laughs> and voices came into being because the sisters, the young ladies at one of the high schools said, this is wrong. You have a male group, and you don't have a group for females. Black, white, green, Latino. African American, whatever, why is it that you're not serving women, you're only serving men? And we said, wow, okay, you're, you're on to something there. Well, why don't you come and join? They joined for about three weeks, and they said, yeah, that's not enough. And so they kind of demanded of ICUSP that we start a girls' program, and really, they start a girls' program. So Voices was born, and Voices is the name they gave to it. The last example there is LEAP, Leadership Enrichment Arts Program, which is a long-standing Austin area organization that wanted to do a leadership institute on campus. They wanted to do a residency. And so we helped them by bringing in fine arts instructors from the University of Texas. We helped them in terms of the relationship with Jester and with the Blanton Museum and with other resources on campus to sort of bring it all together. In each of these cases, we're doing research. In each of these cases, there's teaching and learning and there's certainly service. So here's a staff. This is, a, this is a, an older picture. This is two years ago. All of those folks are my graduate students. I'm really thrilled that three of them are now employed. One of the things that happens to professors these days is that there's not a whole lot of jobs. It turns out, though, that there's something exciting and compelling about PhDs who know how to engage community. So all of a sudden, now there's a new form of capital undergirding the work, and that's that folks actually understand it and are calling for it. Here's one of the chapters. These are sixth graders, public speaking, in the University Teaching Center. So this is UTC. This is at the Warfield Center for African and African, Ameri African, and African American Studies. More work, working with kids on campus. High school chapters, voices, and COBRA teaching young COBRAs and young voices. This is the network of kids. Every shirt color is a different campus. This doesn't work without community partnerships. I don't have money for vans, but I know some really cool churches in the area. I don't own a coffee house, but I know there's one right below East 6th. And they love to have kids come in for field trips. I'm not an elected official, but I know that if I call elected officials and if I say there's these many kids who are doing great things and they have these many parents and these many parents are what? Voters. <laughs> then I can get elected officials, Congressman Doggett, 
Councilman Cole, Councilman Spellman. Sometimes there's even some fearless UT leaders who step up. I don't know who that guy is. I think his name's Ted Gordon. <laughs> and uh, and Miss Robion Charles, who is a vice president in the D Division of Diversity and Community Engagement. Family friendly, those good looking kids are mine. And when we're out in community, and when we're teaching, when we're doing research, when we're serving, there's absolutely no reason why my family can't be a part of it. The only one not pictured there is my beautiful wife. We train students. So far, four PhDs have come out of the ICUS project directors of graduate students. We conduct research. We've had several articles so far and one dissertation. And of course, we purposefully engage community. I didn't cite, I didn't give you references, but there's a whole lot of thinkers behind this work. And a final point that's important for this setting is to remember and to recall and to embrace the idea that we are all thinkers. We are all teachers. We are all learners. And so even as we talk about community-engaged scholarship and you have this kind of sage on the stage set up, the reality is that the deepest insights from ICUSP, the, deepest, the, the greatest things we've discovered, the greatest things we've learned, the greatest things we've done have come about when we've truly listened to and been in partnership with community. Thank you.